Good morning ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Dairyman's Diary here on Gwenthua. My name is Will and we are cracking on today. We're moving some straw back up to the to my yard from Dad's actually today. Uh, we need to, we've got nothing left of the cattle there, we just need to keep them bedded down a little bit because they do come inside still. Um, so yeah, I thought we'd take a little trip out in the John Deere today uh, with a nice load to make it work. It's not going far but it'll have a nice little run out anyway. Uh, so we're gonna head back in and then we'll get ourselves up. We've got a few things to do today. It's gonna be a busy old day uh, But we can we'll get cracking and um, Exhaust isn't half loose look at that but Yeah, so we're gonna take this back up to the yard and then we can uh, we've got a sprayer now We have bought a sprayer finally got one that I wanted and at a relatively good price so uh, we took the plunge, we bought that, and we're going to go and um, we need to get into the fields actually. I've got some uh, wheat and barley that's desperate to be worked on, so we need to go and have a good look at that and get that done. But first of all, we must get our cattle bed down there and need of a little bit more straw, so that's exactly what we're going to do. We will uh, we'll take this back up to the yard there and we can get this, dip, get this done pretty darn quickly really. Uh, oh, and get up the hill there, a little bit slow. Uh, since we last spoke, we have um, well, cleared all the bales out of the fields here on our right hand side. There's no silage bales left in those anymore. Uh, so that was very nice to get done. We've, um, we've started a good stack in the yard there. There's still plenty of room. We'll be adding a lot more to it, no doubt, over the coming uh, weeks. Uh, we've mowed down a little bit more grass as well that will be baled straight up into silage bales. So that's going to be happening very soon. I'll get Dad back across the hour end with his baler. Uh, hay ground's not quite ready to go yet, the grass needs to grow a little bit more before we think about taking a real second cut off. We've just done a little bit, uh, but yeah, it does need to grow a little bit more just to have any fighting chance really. So we'll have to wait and see how that one comes along. But yeah, ultimately everything, we're making some progress here. The, we could do with a little bit of rain, to be honest. Um, preferably not today, we'll get this We'll get the spray and done today. But then, yeah, maybe tomorrow day after we could do with a bit of rain, just to help the grass grow a little bit extra, actually. Uh, really starting to show signs of needing a bit of a boost. Uh, but I'm sure that will come at some point. I'm also currently mulling over the idea of adding in some additional uh, trying to buy some more land actually. We've got a little bit of cash burn in the hole in the pocket at the moment uh, If we could get some machine wise, we're looking good. Uh, we don't need any machinery or to replace any equipment this year So uh, but we could ideally do with uh, if we get some more arable land somewhere That wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. So we'll have to wait and see See what we can do there And we'll just take it nice and slowly into the main yard here. We don't want to go too quickly uh, with our speed limits that we've introduced here, but also just with this big trailer load pushing us, we don't want to have any unnecessary momentum really. And there is the new Holland, it is all geared up with its new narrow shoes on as well, we put the row crops on there, and we've got a hardy sprayer, which is 24 meters in length and width, and working width at least, uh, so it should be plenty big enough for what we need. Uh, we'll stick this down here at the moment, this is a bit of a trailer alley. Those silage bales are from the field, they're the ones we're using currently. Just to supplement the the grass's diet, or the cow's diet, beg your pardon. Uh, we'll just kick this back a little bit, put it there, that's ideal. Okay then. And so when we hook this off, I'm just gonna leave some of these straps on. We'll take the straps off the back end here. I think what would be best for us to do. So as you can see, here are our silage bales from the field stacked up there nicely out the way. We'll probably, well, ideally bring that stack out kind of the in line with the front end of the tractor here, I think. Uh, but uh, there's plenty for us to go out. There's plenty more grass for us to get in as well. So we should we shouldn't worry about be having a shortage at all. I should think. Uh, okay, so we're gonna put the John Deere onto the st um, straw bedder. I we'll have to get the telehandler out to load it, of course, but we can get that done. Not a problem at all. Uh, after that, that's the last job for the cattle done so far this morning. There, they're making a mess already, but we'll clear that up towards the end of the day because it's only going to get worse. Uh, no point doing it now, at least. Uh, 
Okie dokie then, so... It's nice that the cattle are getting outside there. Some of our grass isn't quite long enough or uh, hasn't grown enough to sufficiently support them. So we, we're keeping them inside as much as we can at the moment or kind of splitting them and still feeding them to supplement their, uh, their diet they all get outside. But yeah, the grass is it's getting its best chance to grow right now. That's the, one, the main thing. But like I said, a little bit of rain and it'll be a whole different story. Uh, so we'll leave that there. Hopefully I've left enough room to get around the back. Oh, plenty. So we'll come into the John Deere. This is going to be a little bit loud again. Um, okay. We have a bale spike around the corner. We'll stick that on there, grab a couple of bales. We'll probably oh, put two or three in today, I think. Should just not do it. So I hope you're all doing very well today. I hope you're having a great day and a great week whenever you are watching this. I hope the weather's been kind to you and you've been able to get on. A lot of people around here are really flying on with the silage now, which is great to see. Really pushing ahead with that. Let's go for... Stuff. This telehandler and all the JCBs we've ever had got such a thorough, thorough work over. Um, absolutely, without question, the biggest workhorse on uh, any dairy farm, really. Uh, really does get put to the top, put to the sword on many occasions. I think what we'll do, we'll put two in first. We'll put these down here. Alright, so we'll get those spread and then we'll put another couple in there. We should be laughing. I do just need to kind of pull myself level a little bit more here. We'll back up. And just like that, they have gone. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll get another couple put into here. We'll finish this up nicely, and then we will. Uh, we're going to have a look at the sprayer, and then we'll, we need to go and fill it up. Actually, we've got some pesticides in the store around the corner. Uh, we'll get it filled up, and then yeah, we'll get ourselves. We'll go and have a look at some of these fields of ours. Okay then, ladies and gentlemen, we have, like I say, we've got our T6 here with our row crops on, and we are filling up our Harley sprayer from our store. Um, we're going to be putting up, applying a T3 today, which is a tier 3 uh, or tiller in 3 stage of the growth. So this is when we have um, the most number of leaves coming out on the plant before it goes into seed. And uh, so we have, it's coming along very nicely, uh, so far at least from the crop walks that I have done. But we're gonna, we did just um, invest in a hardy sprayer here. This is approximately 24 meters wide, which is plenty big enough for everything we will need. 
Uh, we have GPS installed on the tractor and we also have um, variable spread and variable spray and, and auto section control on the sprayer. Uh, which is a big step for us, it's something that we've never had before on any sprayers and it's a nice new um, efficient way of spraying for us as well. It means that we don't overlap, we don't apply excessive um, chemicals to any section of the field and we can really control what we're doing which is perfect. Uh, what we are going to be doing today though, we've got a couple of fields to run into, the first of which we're going to go into straight away is here. This, yeah, this is actually our only field of barley we have on the farm, the other fields of my dad's are all wheat. Uh, we've got some maize there as well actually, but for the most part we only have, this is the only field of barley at the moment. I am looking to see if we can get some more land where it, it's too late to drill any this year, but next year we'll definitely get some more barley into the ground. Uh, but as you can see it's coming along nicely, it's looking like a nice even crop actually, so we're, we're going to jump on here and we'll get this, um, get this sprayed pretty quickly and we'll be good to move on. That being said, I haven't actually had this full of uh, any watering chemicals yet and I don't know how heavy it's going to be so when we lift this up we might find that we need a weight on the front. Okay. Right then, that's a little better. We've got our, our weight back on the front here uh, and that should keep us stable. Obviously we'll, we'll get a little bit more stable as we consume some of this, uh, some of this pesticide once we start to empty the tank out though, obviously we'll get a little bit lighter on the back end and that'll be all good. Uh, so yeah, we're going to jump on into the field here and let's get some groundwork done I suppose. Okay, so as we unfold this, we'll put this watcher go over there. I need to pull away from the edge of touch. Okay then, we're away. I've got a little bit of a problem configuring the um, hydraulics, so the boom isn't as high, anywhere near as high as one would like it to be. Uh, but we'll get this applied nonetheless, and then we'll have to take a look at that to see, because for some reason, for some reason there, my hydraulics just won't quite lift high enough. So we need to look into why that is. Uh, but other than that, we're doing very well indeed. That's a nice crop to be in, actually. Really nice looking crop. No tram lines in this field. Uh, the Our machine wasn't calibrated properly when we drilled these. Uh, it was a new machine at the time, so we're going to have to get to work on that one. But with the, care we, with the row crops on here, we can survive without that for now. And for now, we have got our GPS and our section control working in harmony. Uh, so we should see that as we start to, once we finish the headlands here for example, we'll see that the section control turns on and off when we're overlapping, which would be great. Very looking forward to seeing that work. But otherwise everything else has come along nicely. As I mentioned, we are, uh, we have further problems with the old New Holland Forager. That is looking like it is not going to be, um, uh, very good news at all uh, and in fact when I, f I forgot to mention earlier when I mentioned that we are we don't have any machinery upgrades that might be the one where we're struggling we might have to look at seeing what we can do there uh, the engine is blowing on that um, New Holland we dad stripped it down the other day in the workshop there because we saw that it was starting to put out some blue smoke on the um, when we were finishing off the silage and yeah, the, the gasket's blowing, there's, uh, which means that we've got water and oil mixed up. It's um, it kind of flooded the uh, flooded the pistons, which has then caused some warping of the um, of the piston liners, which has then been chewed up and just caused all sorts of issues inside. So at this stage, we're not sure if we're going to think about trying to repair that engine. It is an old old machine, as we've. Uh, as we've alluded to on many occasions, it's it's served us very well. Let's just get ourselves past this post here. There we go. But yeah, it is at this stage looking like something that we just can't afford to uh, to repair. Actually, um, so I mean, what we're probably going to be looking at doing, as you can see, that you should be able to see that we have yeah, just a section control on the far end there is working at the moment. 
So yeah, we do need to try and find the next option, find an alternative option there, uh, so we're looking around. Fortunately we can bail of our second cut silage, that's not the biggest issue in the world, but it does mean that we're going to be struggling for some, uh, for a little while. So we might actually now, I think about it, might not be able to buy any more land, we might have to look at the forager, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, aside from that though, at the moment we're lucky it didn't happen before we start to get into the, uh, into the, the silage work. That would have been pretty disastrous, I know that much for a fact. Go. GPS is just finding this course and we're away. Yeah, really nice looking crop actually. I'm very pleased with how this looks. I'd like to figure out why my hydraulics aren't lifting up there, but never mind. We'll get to that. We will get to that. At this stage, well, I'd like to welcome along all of the new subscribers, as I always do. I've been reading some of your comments, and feedback has been great to see. And I know Simulation for the Nation is very happy with how it's all going. So thank you ever so much for that. And I hope you are enjoying the series here. There's been a lot of people requesting to see the old Ford 7840 in action. And I don't blame you, it's a lovely machine. Very fond of that. I know, as is my dad, so we won't be getting rid of it anytime soon. That's for sure, but uh, yeah, keep an eye out. That might we might see more of that in the future. Well, we're gonna have to if we, if when we start to bail up our uh, our um, second cut. So there'll be a plenty more of that to come. And yeah, otherwise we're just making some great progress here. Howie has been mowing um, what little silage that was able to be cut down. Howie has that mowed out. Uh, Greg has been working hard with the cattle, keeping them all looking tip top. Uh, their output is still really starting to accelerate now with, as we're outside getting some fresh grass, so that's always nice. And they, always, they look so happy to be out there as well, that's the key thing. Uh, it's always good. Uh, straw, we, we're going to be tight for straw this year, that's one thing. There's a shortage of it going around and I think we're going to struggle a little bit, but we'll have to wait and see. Uh, hopefully we can get that changed. Well, that's pretty much us done for this field, so we're going to fold up the sprayer. We'll follow our kind of headline tracks out of here, and then we'll, uh, we're going to drive on over to Dad's yard, where we'll get set up to keep on going into the, the wheat there as well. Uh, and then, yeah, that'll be us for another day. Once we get the spraying done, we're in a good place. A um, few little maintenance tasks to do around the yard, and I guess we we'll have to go looking for a forager as well. Uh, but we'll, we'll worry about that one when the time comes, as the saying goes. Uh, for now though, we will leave it here, so thank you ever so much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, if you have, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to Simulation for the Nation if you have yet to do so already, and we will see you in the next one, so until then, thank you very much for watching, do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing as always, but most importantly, happy farming! <laughs>